Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and oh yes, we are shooting this bad boy today, man. This is my friend Rick's car. It's a, obviously, it's a caddy. The name of the car I absolutely love. It's Sinister, which, it's Sinister, isn't it? This looks like the car that the devil's girlfriend would drive. I absolutely love this car. Rick's a good buddy. We go back years. He's a family friend. He's like a brother to me. So I'm going to once again walk you guys through details on what it takes to bring together a one-off custom on this level. Don't know if we'll even throw out dollar amounts because I know a lot of you are going f***ing ape shit about the dollar amounts that I throw out, although they're accurate. Um, moreover, rather than focusing on the dollar amount, what I want to focus on is the time, the energy, the creativity to come up with something at this level. I'm gonna show you the world that I know and get you guys fired up, hopefully inspire you to go out and build your car. So we're gonna do this, this is gonna be fun. Here we go. Hey you guys, this is my buddy Rick. Rick is a old family friend. Been together a long time now. <laughs> and today we're in his 67? 67 Caddy. It's a 67 Caddy. It's far from a stock all original 67 Caddy, as you can tell. So you guys know I've been on this trip, right? To educate a little bit and give you a concept of what it takes to build cars on this level. So I don't know a lot of the details. Actually, I know very few of the details on this car. So I'm going to peg Rick with a bunch of questions and we're going to listen to what he has to say here. Here's one detail I know for sure. He built this entire car in 18 weeks time, which is insane, dude. It was, it was, a, it was a time frame that was set forth by our sponsors. It was, it was a process where everybody got together, put together a schedule that everybody agreed to, and it was just, it was, it was nuts. It was a mad thrash. It yeah. was crazy. So you start with a, a bone stock, all original. You said you you bought it from the second owner, so you're the third owner on this car. Fully documented car. Okay, so it's a 67 Caddy. You buy third owner. It's an all original car, right? Yeah. Decent condition when you bought it? It was okay. I mean, it, you know, it, it was a nice car. It's a car that didn't leave the West Coast, which was really cool. So you start with an original Caddy, you've got 18 weeks to knock it out. Tell me, uh, I know the car's airbagged. Walk me through, we take an original car, turn it into this. What is this? Well, what, what this is, is we like, got- What's the motor? Let's go there well, first. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a completely rebuilt 429. It's got a mild cam and a dual exhaust all the way back. What exhaust is on here? It's Flowmaster 44s. Okay. Two and a half inch stainless all the way back. Right. Flowmaster 44s. We went through and we did did all the mechanical that had to be done. I mean, there were suspension issues that had to be taken care of. I mean, everything had to be checked. Big brakes, the whole nine yards. You know, there's just so many things that happen in a process of building a car, especially when you only have that 18 week period. So the scheduling, as I said, Sean, that was super critical. When we got the yeah. car down to bare metal, we then decided to do the fabrication part of it, metal fabrication. So we, we took the car over to Canberra Speed. Ron Canberra and his team went ahead and welded everything in. They got rid of everything that wasn't necessary to be on the car. We smoothed the car completely out. We peaked everything. And then we took the car to Body and Paint. Body and Paint was Autobahn out in Costa Mesa. When Autobahn got done with it, it was like, you gotta be kidding because the car's metal finished. So there's no Bondo buildup on this car. Wow, it's all nice. Metal. With a, with a car Which, by the way, you guys, did you just hear that? Because I know I've seen a couple of comments about, yeah, these custom cars, they're just full of a bunch of Bondo to make it look good, but then it all starts falling apart. So this is a zero, zero Bondo car, which right away is impressive. I think that's... Because most people are going to opt for that. It's going to be the cheaper, easier, faster way to go, right? Rather exactly, than dealing with metal. Exactly. We opt to do everything in full metal. Right. Which means basically body block and a hammer. Let me ask you this, just in, in body work alone, prepped, ready to go to paint, and we're gonna get further into it, but, but ultimately the car starts raw and then turns out like this. How many hours just in paint and body alone? Just paint and body. There's probably, I don't know, 
Sean, there's probably a thousand. Okay. You yeah. guys hear that? You know, there's think multiple, about there's think about how guys many working on the car at the same time. Right. I just want people to understand a thousand hours just in the paint and body. A thousand hours of work is it, it, it's an extraordinary amount of time. I mean, there's there's cars that are completed in less hours than that. Yeah. Oh, the, the details are the most important thing, especially when you're talking about a custom car. So, you've got 18 foot 3 inches of canvas to work with. That's a lot of canvas. The main thing was to be able to take the body lines and to get them to peak. So we came back in and we peaked all the body lines. On this car, it's got what they call a four-tier brake in it. There's four different body lines. So then it came down to paint. Well, Tempe actually... Tempe's his wife. Tempe was able to work with PPG, who's our paint sponsor, and come up with a color which is called Sinister Blue. <laughs> it's a one-off color that PPG developed for us. But the color, it actually has four different brakes in it. So it's got it's got small flake in it. It's got medium flake. It's got some purple in it. There's five layers of clear. The fourth layer has pearl in it. Uh, the fifth layer is just a heavy clear also. So wow. there's a lot that's gone on. If somebody said, "Wow, I love that color," can they buy this color or no? They can get a hold of PPG. Tell them they want and sinister blue, and they can get it. Awesome. Question for you because you were talking about it a little earlier, but this is one that I think the the people that watch this might really appreciate. The lines on this car, you guys will notice how sharp the lines are. I, I think that's Rick's term was peaking, but it's it's like the simple, the the fairly layman term here is is how sharp the lines are, right? Exactly right. So how do you, what do you guys do to create that sharpness to get them to really, like you said, peak? There's two ways you can do it. You can either do it with a skim coat, which is what a lot of guys do, or you can put like an eighth inch piece of weld on top of it which is the right way to do it. That's so you we actually do. weld metal on top. Yeah, that, you said you look, wire you use? Yeah, if you look at the hood, the peaking on the hood. Right. There's just a lot of detail work that, that was done that you don't see. You were showing the show me the front bumper saying it used to have gills there. Yeah, on the either side of the, of, the, uh, of the license plate, there was a gill section in there, which are two big holes that actually fed the radiator. Well, what we did is we actually took and had that particular piece, Joe over fast lane, he actually welded in a piece and we sent it out and we had to have it, you know, finished. By filling that in, it takes the flare of a 65 Cadillac and it brings it to a 67. So the goal was to make it look like a 65, which is exactly what I did. We built the rear tail section of the car, the inserts, to mimic the front. So the wow. two offsets, we used a, a 3 16 by 3 quarter aluminum piece, built backing plates, and put them in the back of the car to match the front. Wow. And then of course we took the bumpers, we pinched the bumpers, you know, we we pulled everything in. It's all about the detail work, you know, and then the- Absolutely. You know, the interior, The, the marker, and I, I remember you were also pointing out too, like how the side of this car, to get the, it, as clean as it is, the marker lights went away. The chrome trim that would have been there, all the holes left from that now have to be filled. Well, Sean, one of the cool things, this is the chrome trim from the outside of the car. Which is just awesome. I love that. You know, we wanted we wanted to get to a point where we had something that was just completely different. There's eight hides of Italian leather in this car. <laughs> And it was all about color. I absolutely love your color combo choice on this car. I think it's I think it's spectacular. I really do. It's such a departure from what you're used to seeing. You know, going with the red interior, it was, it was ridiculous because everyone's like, my gosh, you know, what are you doing? What are you thinking? <laughs> totally. And it's like, you know, why not? everything is stock inside but the part that you don't see is that it's got a 15,000 watt Alpine system in it. <laughs> what we did what we did is Alpine stepped to the plate through one of our suppliers Z Auto Center. Wait, wait, wait. Did you guys hear that? 15,000 watts in stereo. Cars got two side-by-side -side 1,505 channels so that's 15,000 watts going there. Unbelievable, I've got nine man. speakers that are buried. You can't find a speaker in the car. No, not at all. So I wanted I wanted people to stick their head in. I wanted to go, whoa, what's going on here? 
you know, I built a plexiglass cover for the dash unit, which right. that's a one-off piece. This is a 68 GMC steering wheel. Wow. You know, American Racing got one-off rims on it. The rims on this car are so cool. So these are one-offs on here that American Racing did yeah, for you? Yeah, what it is, American Racing has sponsored me for many, many years. And when this whole project came together, they were getting ready to launch the Stella rim, which is what this is, Max Gundy designed. And they gave us two sets of rims to choose from. It was the latest and greatest. And we said, okay, let's do those. So we had them hand built. And when we got them in, Nito Tires stepped up and provided us with tires. Acura gave us all of the air ride suspension. Those guys are unbelievable up there. How many hours total? Because again, this, this is for educating people that don't, they just don't quite understand the process of building a custom one-off. How many hours total would you say are into this car from start to finish? Well, Done you know, deal. You have to understand, I mean, hours are, I mean, it's a moving target, but at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that you have multiple people working on the car on any given day. Sure. Every person is an hour. Sure. So if you have four guys on the car for an hour, you got four hours. Right. So there's, there's probably 2,000 hours total. The car's been... It was campaigned uh, to 22 different shows, won everything, multiple magazines, Slam Magazine Car of the Year, custom rides out of Japan, full-blown cover shot on it. Wow. Good Guys Magnificence Award. I mean, it's it's just gotten everything. I, I, I see it. I'm around enough of you guys. Because you guys know I'm not a builder. I'm not a designer. I'm none of that stuff. I just hang out with the guys that build and design. The level of appreciation I have for the artistry, the craftsmanship that goes into creating cars like this is it's why I want to keep showing this stuff. This world of one-off custom vehicles for me is it's by far my favorite part of the car world. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, what do you think of the Sinister Caddy? Pretty badass, right? Definitely wasn't expecting a little bit of a smoke show from Rick. For any of you guys that jump out going, oh man, it's a one-legger, that's right. He's got the stock 12-volt Caddy rear end in this thing. And like he just said a few minutes ago, why wouldn't you keep it in there? It's bulletproof. It's guaranteed to work every single time. One of my favorite things personally, and you guys know this, man, I am not a fan of trailer queens. I like it when guys build cars, they build them the right way, and then they drive them. I love it, man. This was just a blast. I mean, it's fun to talk through the details, and I love that you guys are getting to hear the details from the builder rather than from me trying to reiterate what the builder told me prior to my drive. Gotta say a massive thanks to my buddy Rick for bringing out his car early on a Sunday morning to meet me in the already 100 degree heat out here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I truly did, man. Since the completion of the car, I've seen this thing at so many events, really knocking people out in magazines, social media, on and on and on. This is, this is one of those serious badass cars. And once again, here we are showing you the world of one-off custom vehicles. Hope you guys had a great time. Thanks for hanging with me. By the way, a week ago, I said we had just crossed 5,500 subscribers. You guys just brought me to over 11,000 subs and growing daily. So I can't say thanks enough for watching, for hanging, for sharing. And uh, as always, man, just a massive thanks. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Later, man.